working on the board ships. You must really like that, other way you will not fit in the environment. This, is, this could be a problem. Despite all these challenges I might go through, I must be alert and positive in my mind. It's quite hard, but for the sake of the family, we will do our best. When people talking about the, being a say, saying, uh, saying the word, I would say nowadays it's not anymore like that. Yeah, we mostly we see the ship, mostly we see the airports where we are arriving, where we are leaving. A seafarer when he's on board, he's uh, you know he's on his second home altogether, and in a home you don't have to do full day of work. The main one I see is loneliness, isolation, spending a long time away from home, family, friends. How do we make life at sea enjoyable? not just bearable, we want to make it enjoyable, we want people to thrive at sea. Creating the right conditions for people to thrive and flourish in their work can often be difficult. For seafarers, it can be even more challenging. Tied to an environment where the boundaries between living and working sometimes blur, they have fewer opportunities to relieve everyday pressures. That's why paying attention to well-being can make a real difference to health, happiness, and the whole experience of living and working at sea. Well-being at its very simplest is a sense of feeling healthy and well and happy and contented. Trying to be positive about things rather than negative, having meaningful relationships with people, um, having meaning in your life, meaning and purpose and having a sense of achievement, setting goals, achieving things. They all make up that, that uh, concept of wellness. That leads on to better decision making, being able to integrate with your crew members more easily, encouraging people, working well as a team, um, having less accidents. Because if you're fully present, then you'll be paying attention to, to the risks. And it doesn't take a lot to change it. It's a bit like going to the gym. You've got to be committed to do it. The good news is that we can do a lot to control our well-being. And it can start by simply becoming more aware of the positives in everyday life. Sometimes when you woke up, it's like feeling uh, it's a work again. <laughs> Too many works to do. So. If you have uh, on deck, you have uh, jobs like uh, chipping. It's like this is work, but for me, it's also a fun work. You think for yourself, it is uh, not so bad. It's like working on your free time. <laughs> yeah. When day-to-day -day stresses build up, positivity can be hard to find which makes it even more important to notice when we're happy. I think it's very important that we appreciate what we have today, appreciate the nature out there. If you go out and, uh, and, and spend just 15 minutes out on the, on the deck and see your surroundings out there, it's a beautiful world, it's a beautiful nature all around. A common man will not find that on any particular day. With fewer opportunities for shore leave, rest periods on the ship become ever more important as a break from the work environment. So when you have the chance, make time for doing things you enjoy. After dinner or after work for the whole day, it's either I'm watching movies or reading books books that talks about action, the mystery, reading the next sequel, the next book about it. I also like playing video games when I'm bored of reading books. Doing physical exercise somewhat helps to take out stress for me. It helps my body relax after a long, tiring day of, in work. When you're really focused on something challenging, you can lose a sense of time passing, and that can be when you are at your happiest. This is known as a flow activity. 
The best flow activities are so physically or mentally stimulating and absorbing that you can't think about anything else. The state of flow feels good in the moment, and the more you do it, the more your well-being accumulates over time. Flow activities aren't just confined to the gym or rec room, they can also be work or learning related. I'd like overhauling because every day when there is overhauled something, machineries or whatever, I could discover more and more and I can expand my knowledge more and share it to my colleagues. Whatever I have experienced, how to do this in the right way, in a safer way, in the fastest way. Learning a new skill or studying for a qualification can lead to one of the cornerstones of well-being achievement. But equally, achievement could be simply staying fit and healthy and earning money to support a family. Achievements can be wide-ranging. It could be the planning of moving a house, buying a new pet, having a child. Um, and the fact of planning then allows you to put some structure in around how do I get there. And then those milestones give you that sense of achievement so you know you're making forward progress. And when times are tough and you're going through a low patch, you can look at those goals and say, I've got something I'm aiming for. I do have license for a third engineer and now I keep on studying just to make higher ranks and hopefully in the near future, I will be a good third engineer. Well-being also depends on how well we get on with those around us. Research shows that the times we are truly happy and joyful often involve other people. Basically, we're social animals. We don't like to be alone. Um, and as a consequence, we need to be together. Being alone is something we can choose to do at any time. But loneliness is something we don't choose. So we need to keep people away from loneliness. And the best way to do it is to be social. When Saturday night comes, after dinner, the galley personals are there, also the deck guys, as well as the engine guys, they get together. They have this uh, karaoke that they are doing, so just to enjoy their weekend. We should create the opportunities for people to come together. It allows you to share with other people how you feel, they can share with you, you can feel you're not alone, you can share the upside of life and the downside of life, but it's an important part of being human. The crew are good, they're approachable, they let me feel like I'm still at home. They're always kind. I learn a lot from them. If one of us feels like homesick like that, or he's, it's very hard to adapt a different kind of environment, we help one, one each other. Building the ideal shipboard community where everyone gets on well together will always require a little effort. So we have now three months uh, voyage with one port and staying here with all this person, different characters, different person, different uh, culture. If we are arguing, if we have some bad relations, bad things between us, we need to solve them. In, on shore, in real life, you can just abandon the, the, the person, just can, can walk out and forget about it. Here, you cannot. Why not make the colleagues as a friends? So when you go to the job on the day-to-day -day basis, if you make environment such that people going there, they, they consider this as going meeting a friend instead of meeting a colleague or maybe some uh, angry boss. I believe then we, there will be no need for changing the environment on board because the environment on board is already good. <laughs> for many seafarers, maintaining a close connection with home is essential to their well-being. Being not able to go ashore is okay as long as I have contact with my family. It's very important for me 
because they are the one who motivates me to overcome all of the stress. Opening up to friends and family about any worries and negative feelings can provide valuable perspective and help to keep relationships strong. My dad has been at sea for the longest time, probably longer than, you know, living on land. When my dad left, my mom was pregnant with me. And when he came back, I was more than a year old. And we as a family have developed ways to cope. I think personally, communication is key. If you have wife or husband, if you have children, probably everybody miss them. So if you have bad mood, if something is happening to you, you just can contact with them anytime you can. This is very important for your mental health. It's like an excitement for me at the end of the day because I know they will, I will get a message from them and it is a relief. Internet access, calls, messaging and social media can help strengthen relationships. But sometimes this always-on connection with home life can put seafarers under pressure. The fact that they have live connection to home, they get real-time crises brought on board the ship. So many years ago, your, your child may have broken their leg and you wouldn't hear about it until you get a letter and the letter would say, little Johnny broke his leg, but he's all right now. Now, little Johnny's broken his leg, I'm waiting for the ambulance. You know, everything's in real time, which you then feel hopeless to do something about. We need to be aware of that and we need to help prepare um, people on board and families that they need to manage those, those messages quite carefully. I would say that my work now gave me the perspective that you should manage your expectations. And that's from both sides. There will be pressures on your family, on yourself as a seafarer. But having, you know, being on the same page and talking this through before leaving for an assignment or a contract is key. I make sure that my family understands that at this time, it's time for work and it's no time for Facebook or anything. Work is work and Facebook is Facebook, so it's all about time management. Well-being can also come from a sense of purpose in your life. This is what makes you get up in the morning and could be the reason you've chosen to be a seafarer rather than working ashore. But the things people give greatest value to are different for everyone. This job is really hard, I would say, but I like it. Cadets don't have any special duties or responsibilities on board. But still, we don't have much time for ourselves because what is our main purpose to be on board? Learn, gain knowledge, raise yourself. So most important for me is to learn to become a proper officer, not to become a model. <laughs> this is my main purpose. Passing on knowledge or mentoring can also give people a sense of purpose and helps to build self-esteem. Mentoring is giving back. I think it gives people a great sense of achievement, that they're actually being useful in the world. They're not taking, they're giving. And I think any element of giving, volunteering, whatever it happens to be, makes you feel much better as a human being. Normally, when I have a cadet here, I am teaching there what is my job, what is the principle of the machineries, and how to be a young and good future engineer. Every person on board ship has a responsibility towards each other to look after their own crew. It can be called a mentoring, it can be looking after your own crew, your own family members altogether. I learned a lot from them, what have they have encountered, those mistakes, and I'm just enjoying my work and I love doing the things that I am do doing right now as a seafarer. And there's one final element that improves our mood and outlook. It's the feeling of vitality we have when we pay attention to our physical well-being. Exercise produces a number of neurochemicals that allow your brain to thrive. Equally, nutrition does. So if you feed your gut well, 
you're producing the right chemicals again for your brain to feel for you to feel better as well sleep is an incredibly important part of your day sleep regenerates the cells in the body it allows your brain to assimilate all the learning that you've had during the day if you don't get enough then it doesn't discharge enough information and therefore you haven't learned much from the day so if you can create the right environment for your brain to thrive, you're going to feel better. It's as simple as that. Being physically active is one of the most important tools for resetting a person's outlook and starting to feel better. Nowadays, Captain is sitting in office quite a lot. So just to change this environment, I try to go as much as possible out on the deck, have a fresh air, see something more around than the emails and the paperwork and things like that. The gym is another option to, to, to reset and get away from the sea environment, just to change the environment. So gym is a very good place to be. Even when space is limited, it should still be possible to work out on board. And if you're able to get outside to exercise, even better. Normally every Saturday in the afternoon, we are playing basketball just to hang out. And we are so happy. We just play like a like a family, like brothers. Doing enjoyable activities, building your sense of achievement and purpose, and getting quality rest, food and exercise will all help build a solid foundation for well-being. But coping through difficult times can still be a challenge. If you have personal problems at home, Maybe I'll ask some advices to some guys in here, but not really talking to them what my problem really is. And just asking them, what if, if I'm going to just cite an example, what if it happens to you or like that? So that you can ask some advices, some suggestions, and then you can also uh, absorb it. And maybe it will come as a solution to you. How are you going to overcome the problem that you're facing right now? Luckily, seafarers never need to be entirely alone with their problems. There are many support organizations that can help. One option is ISWAN's Seafarer Help. They operate a 24-hour multilingual helpline. Seafarers and their families can contact them through email and live chat or messaging apps, as well as voice calls. We recognize that some seafarers do not like sharing you know, their problems to colleagues at work or to their families thinking that they might just end up burdening them. When they're overwhelmed, it's very difficult for them sometimes to define what the problem is. So our job is to help them through that. Our team is here to make them feel comfortable, support them throughout the process, but ultimately it is their decision to make on what they want to do about the situation. It's important to recognize the signs of stress or anxiety in yourself or in others. Typically, people tend to slow down, um, may get quite anxious about things, can get irritable, um, disengage from the community on board. And I think the crew need to be able to recognize those things. I and mean, if you do know your fellow crew well, you can see a change. Um, and if you see a change, then I think you know, as human beings, we naturally like to rally around and, and help them out. For anyone who's worried about themselves or a crewmate, face-to-face -face support is available from organizations such as the Mission to Seafarers. They provide free and confidential support through a worldwide network of seafarer centers. Many of the chaplains and support staff are trained in resilience guidance and pastoral care, so there's always someone you can talk to. And if shore leave is not possible, you can arrange for someone to visit the ship. We are a global organisation. We are represented in so many ports around the world that the seafarers have not got to look too far um, to get some help. You do get those signs from the seafarers. Maybe those that when you meet on board, those seafarers that don't want to go ashore. And I think that's the importance of the mission. That's why we're also, as a society, very proactive about visiting 
as many ships as we can once they come into the port. As soon as somebody comes up the gangway and says, I'm from the mission, the seafarers then know this is somebody I can talk to. This is somebody I can pour my heart out to, if need be. There's always something we can do to improve how we feel and to become better able to cope with what life throws at us. Whether it's drawing on our inner resources or looking outside ourselves to friends, family, crewmates and support organisations. We all want to feel satisfied in our lives and it really is in our power to achieve this. To get you started, remember these five tips. Do more of what makes you happy. Keep learning new skills. Connect with people. Give to others. And be physically active. Even if you have a problem, try to think that all of the problem has a solution. Every day, Think it as a blessing and always positive vibe.